Are you looking for a last wish guide where the content creator gets to the point but provides enough detail that a beginner can pick up the raid easily? Well, look no further, you found it. Hi, I'm Part-Time Guardian. If you're new to my channel, I create guides for beginners and returning players and also PvE guides that get to the point but also provide enough detail because sometimes content creators who've been at this for a while will leave out key things that new players need to finish a raid. And The Last Wish is probably one of my favorite raids in Destiny 2, so I it's something that can seem daunting, but any player can definitely get through this raid following my guide. The first encounter is Kali, and you're going to learn a lot of things that are going to transfer to later portions of the raid. First off, as you enter the room, you're going to notice that there are symbols in the center of the room. There are pairs of symbols, and you'll notice that there are some plates that are in different areas of the room that have single symbols above them. And as far as the symbol callouts, each fire team is going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to put an infographic that shows an example of what some fire teams do. My fire team doesn't even do necessarily all of these. In fact, some of ours are pretty inappropriate. I won't share those on the video, but... Knowing these symbols is going to be really important and deciding what's going to, what your fire team is going to use is going to be important because these are repeated throughout the raid, similar to how Vow Disciple is. So the easiest way to do this is have your fire team group up into three groups of two. And what you're going to want to do is, again, remember there are symbols that are around the different plates and then there are pairs of symbols in the middle. You're going to want to go to one area of the room. Let's say pick an area in the middle of the room and stand on those two symbols. Wherever you're standing, you're, you're, you and your buddy, that place is between DPS phases. You're always going to go back to figure out what your next symbol is because the symbol that you're covering in Cali is going to change. Now, you could do this however you want. This is the easiest way, especially for new players, not to get confused about what they have to cover because they're not going to know all the symbols at the very beginning. So you go to that area and you pick what symbol you and your buddy are going to cover. Then you and your buddy are going to look around the room and there will be two plates that have that symbol, just one symbol. One person is going to go to one area of the room. One person is going to go over. Don't get on the plate yet, but that's what you're going to do. Everyone's going to do that and get towards their plate. When you're ready to start the encounter, what you're going to do is everyone's going to jump on the plate. You notice on the plate that there are two areas that look like they're kind of glowing um, with like taken stuff. And you'll notice that there's one area that's clear. You're going to want to stand in the area that's clear during the encounter. And that area will change. It'll be in the middle, then it'll be in the left, on the right. So it's very important because if you're in the area with the Taken and it does its rotation to, to basically switch those, that will kill you, which will obviously require someone to have them to come in and res you. So you'll want to make sure you do that. The other thing is ads are going to spawn around you. You'll need to kill those. And I would recommend something that's good for ad clear, like a submachine gun, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, that's going to have a lot of ammo, probably a primary. Cali will also warp around the location and will at some point land near you and potentially try to boop you off the plate. If you were off the plate, you just need to get back on. As you get through your rotations, at the very end, you're going to see a knight that shows up. So this is probably where you'll want something like either a grenade or a shotgun or, or fusion rifle, something where you're going to be able to do damage really quickly and take it out. Once you're finished with that knight, that means your plate is done. All six of the plates have to be complete or something else happens, which I'll explain in a minute. If at the end you're done and someone's still struggling, like they either need rest or they're struggling with their night or they're not completely through their cycle, just have those people call out and you can run over and help them. You have plenty of time to do this. Once you've finished all six plates or you run out of time, you'll notice there's a message in the lower left hand corner around Callie's weapon. That means everyone goes into the middle. Once you're in the middle, that's where you do DPS. Now, she's going to have three mini phases in here where you can do DPS to her. But I would say for damage, there's a couple ways you can do this. Some people use swords. She does have a, a boot mechanic, so you maybe want to use lament or something like that. Some people use shotguns. Probably the safest and easiest way is probably using linear fusions, right? That's what the meta is for most things. Keep in mind, she does move around quite a bit. So using a divinity or just having good aim is going to be really, really important. Now, towards the end of that DPS phase in the middle of the area, you're going to see another message up in the lower left-hand corner, and you'll see Callie kind of looks like she's summoning something. That's the wipe mechanic. To protect yourself from the wipe mechanic, you actually need to do the next part of the encounter. So for this, what you're going to need to do is that whatever, whatever area she's above, you'll notice there's three areas that have doors, okay? Whatever area she's above, those doors are going to open. Now, that's why it was important for you to kill the knights. If you've killed all six knights, six doors will open. If you don't, one person's out of luck. You're just going to die. And you can't have two people in the same location. If you look at the doors, this is how we handle it. If you look from left to right and top down, so in other words, the top row go left to right and then go to second row, 
left to right, we count from one to six. And before the encounter, we pick a number like one through six. Well, some people can do it by their fire team order or you can just decide, right? Obviously one and six are very easy. The reason you have to do it this way is that the doors that show up, there's more than six doors and you never know which ones are gonna show up. So you basically count off. So the first one on the top row on the left is gonna be one. The last one you have on the bottom row on the right is gonna be six. You very quickly get into those doors, let those finish up, and then you can come back out. And that starts another sequence. One of the things that we do if we wanna get our, our, our supers back is if we have someone with tether, when you come out of there, there's gonna be a ton of ads in the middle. Have the person with the tether drop their tether and kill the ads, and you're gonna get a ton of orbs so people can get their supers back. That completes a complete phase of her damage. You can do that, you'll see there's three sets of doors. You can do that a total of three times, and obviously you can do that a fourth time without the doors. It's almost like an arranged mechanic. Just do that, continue doing that, remembering that when you go into the next phase of the encounter, you're gonna to need to go back to the same area you start at the very beginning, or look in that area, because the symbol you and your buddy are doing on the plates is going to change. Do this enough time and you'll complete Cali Encounter. The next encounter is Surachi. Now Surachi is one where a lot of teams can get messed up and can fail. And so this one can be a little bit complicated. I would say that you're gonna need some people who are good at kind of thinking on their feet in this, but if you practice it enough, you should get good at this encounter. So for this encounter, you're gonna to wanna to use a lot of roaming supers. Um, because you'll be able to, you have a lot of ads you have to clear out and you can get orbs to get people their supers back. You'll need a couple wells to the encounter just to help with DPS, but this is not a heavy DPS encounter. This is more of a puzzle and clearing ads encounter. So as you go into the first room, you'll notice this is just a ton of ads. Kill the ads and you'll see Surachi. Surachi will be sitting on a plate and you'll notice that on the, the plate, there are three glowing areas that'll show up. You don't want to stand on those yet. So basically kill all the ads. Once you kill all the ads, there'll also be an eye of ribbon that drops. We don't, I don't typically use that in the encounter anymore. You can use that to extend the encounter because you'll notice there's a timer that accelerates that sure she will wipe you if you don't finish that portion of the encounter. But again, the eye of ribbon will potentially extend that, but I don't use it these days. It's pretty easy to do without that. So you'll see the three plates and you'll see three nuts that show up. Once you see that, again, this is something you should probably call it before you get into the encounter three people are gonna jump on at the same time onto those plates and grab the nuts. The reason you're doing it at the same time is the minute you drop, you go on those plates, you're gonna start dying. So you have to be really quick about this. So you jump on the plate, you grab the nuts. What we do is we typically, you can do it either way, we shoot to the right. So whichever nut you have, you shoot the person to your right and you're trying to form a ring around Shurochi. Once you form that ring and you'll notice it because there's an effect that comes up that shows you that it's complete, then you'll be able to do DPS. At that point, you wanna put a well down. What we typically do is we'll use swords or we use shotguns, things that are close. That's typically the easy uh, way to do it. And again, you're not trying to completely kill her. You notice she has six phases. You're just trying to get her to the next phase. So you'll do that in one area. Then you'll go and you'll do it again. You'll kill ads, grab the nuts, shoot everyone, and then do damage to again. So once you finish those two phases, you're gonna to get to the next interesting wrinkle in this encounter. So in this next encounter, you're gonna need four people that you called out at the beginning of the encounter. And so those people will be labeled one through four. When you go into the room, the other two people are gonna do, they're gonna use roaming supers or things like that to kill all the ads where possible. They're there to protect the other four. For the other four, as soon as you get in the room, look to your left and you're gonna see a you're gonna see a thing on the wall, okay? And you also notice there's nine plates you can stand on. On the thing on the wall, you're gonna notice there are nine sectors. So if you think about it, again, same concept. First row, left to right, second row, left to right, third row, left to right, that's the order. Again, if, you, if you're if you older like me, you can remember a phone like this, it's kinda of like the phone, right? You know, if you think about it, it's like the number pad, one through nine. And so what we do is, again, you have one through four. One, the person who's one is the person who's gonna go and get on the first plate first. Second person on second plate, third on third uh, third plate, fourth and fourth. And what I mean by that is the order, again, which it shows from left to right on the first, left to right on the second, left to right on the third. So again, if you're the first person, you're going to have the first one, and again, one through four. Once you're clear with that, what we do is we just have everyone call their ready. We have one ready, two ready, three ready, four ready. Once everyone is ready, once you've heard that, there's probably one person you're typically coordinating with that says, okay, everyone jump on. So you all, at that point, jump on your plate, okay? Once you do that for long enough, you'll notice the plates fill up 
and you'll see a message show up. Once you do that, you get off the plate. What's going to happen then is you're going to have another wall show up. And again, it's going to do the same thing and you're going to have to do the same thing one through four. Now, one key thing is, is you need to remember which plate you hopped on previously. And there's a reason for that. You can only get on the same plate once. You can't get on it twice. So because of that, that and that will basically, that, that will stop the encounter from completing. You You won't be able to fill up the uh, the plates. So what you need to remember is if you, for instance, if one has stepped on that plate already, right, the one that you rotate to, what we typically do is we set up like a rotation of people who rotate with each other, like maybe one and four, two and three. Again, you guys can work that out, but it's gonna be something you have to do quickly on the fly. And again, you're gonna do that a third time, and then that portion, that puzzle portion of the encounter is gonna be done. Now, it's also really important when you get into this room the first time, if you have around a minute left on the timer, you're usually in pretty good shape. If you have less than that, it's just gonna be really tight. So just keep that in mind. So once you do that three times, then you're gonna see almost like these teacups. That's what I call them because they kind of rotate. Um, but they're basically platforms that are gonna show up and then you have to jump on. Now you have to be very careful about timing. Once everyone jumps on them, they're actually gonna fall. So you, you do have some funny things where someone jumps off the end as everyone else is jumping up and the thing rotates and then it's hard for everyone to get up. The other piece of this, after you get down the second one, there's gonna be a knight that'll boop you off once you jump through the open area. So a lot of times what we do is when we get the last one, we'll throw a couple grenades up there to kind of kill him so we can get onto the next part of the encounter. So again, you're gonna do this a total of three times. And towards the end, it does get a little progressively more difficult, at least I found as you finish up the encounter. But as long as you control the ads, you're doing the plates correctly, and then doing the puzzle correctly, then when you get to that last thing with Shirachi, you're gonna kill her and you're gonna be done with this encounter. Couple things to remember, ammo economy is really important. So having finders on and things like that's gonna be really important because towards the end, it's kind of hard to have enough uh, ammo to finish up. That's where you could have some other supers, but again, just make sure you have different options that if you do run with ammo, like maybe a shotgun and a sword or other things, again, depending on what your fire team does, but you finish that and you go into the next encounter. So the next encounter is Morgoth. And at Morgoth, Morgoth is just a large ogre that has a crit spot on his back. And obviously this is an encounter where DPS is going to matter and doing DPS quickly. So just to give you some ideas for DPS, there are a couple different ways to do it. You can obviously stand in the very front of the room and you can use snipers or linear fusion rifles. That is one way to do it. What a lot of people do is they'll use swords or shotguns in the back. So if you, where you spawn in after you go through the jumping puzzle, if you go all the way to the back behind him, he has a crit spot in his back, his big bulbous mass, and that's usually where most people do it. So that's personally what I would do if you want to finish off this encounter. Again, for team composition, you're going to want to have two teams, one right, one left, composed of three people. On each side, you're going to want to have one person who is going to pick up the Eye of Riven. And then you're going to have to have another person who's doing ad clear and another person who's picking up Taken Strength. Taken Strength will spawn throughout the encounter. In fact, to start the encounter, you'll have to pick up an initial Taken Strength. Once you do this, the encounter will start. You'll need to have person get on the right and left, pick up two Taken Strength. They're little blight looking items that you jump through and you can't get more than two. You can get two, if you get three, you die. And the problem is, is when you do that, it's going to put that Taken Strength back on the field, which is gonna require you to have to collect it again. Get those first two and kill ads. It's very important to kill ads as quickly as possible on the right and left, because as you're doing that, you're going to see there at the very top, you know, in the back of the area, you're going to see that there are more yellow bars that spawn. It's very important to get those down because at one point there's gonna be one on each side that's going to be a knight that'll give you an eye of ribbon you're going to need to have two designated players one on the right and one on the left who are going to kill those knights and collect that eye of ribbon it has different again if you've played Val disciple it's very dis uh, similar to the one in there it has different depend you can use your grenade and you use your supers and other things the grenade attack is what you're going to need to use in this encounter your grenade and potentially the super attack once the people on the right and left have collected or taken strength one person, either on the right and left, who has taken strength, is going to be frozen and won't be able to move. And if you don't get to them in time, they're going to die. To unfreeze them, you'll need someone with, with the Eye of Riven to do their grenade attack to unfreeze them. Now, again, you don't know, first, who's going to be frozen, if it's right or left. And you don't know at that point who's going to have the Eye of Riven, right? Because it could be possible that one side is behind. 
That's why it's really important for the people that have taken strength to stay as close to the middle as possible so people can get to you quickly because you are on a timer. If you do happen to die, you're going to die, and that taken strength is going back on the field. Now, once the person with the Eye of Riven does a grenade attack, they're going to absorb the taken strength from the player that they just worked with. So then at that point, that person who had the taken strength before can now pick up the additional taken strength. So again, on the right and left after that, you're going to basically have two more taken strength that you have to pick up. So the other person who's doing add clear or the person who just got unfrozen can go pick that up on both the right and left. The goal is by the time you finish the instant encounter is that there'll be a total of 10 taken strength that'll be picked up to start the DPS phase. The other key to this is that you're going to do this as quickly as possible because Morgoth has a counter. It's like you'll see his strength is 10%, 20%, 40%, whatever. The, the higher that is, the less time you have to finish it because when it gets to 100%, it's a wipe mechanic. So you're going to want to do all of this as quickly as possible. The other thing is towards the end, you're going to have one more person pick up an Eye of Riven and there's a reason for this. So once you pick up that last strength off of the field, that's where DPS starts. So again, my primary recommendation is to go in the back, you know, put down a well, you know, use tractor cannon or whatever you have, use shotguns and just continue to do damage. Now, if you do this, again, you can also use Lament. We've used Lament in some of our runs. So if you do that, but it is hard to hit him with that. Just keep in mind, because he's kind of, he's just, his hitbox is not very easy to hit. But if you do that, you can finish him off. Now, what you'll notice is if you haven't been quickly enough, you'll see the counter going 80%, 90%. That's where the Eye of Riven comes into play. At that point, you can use the Eye of Riven super attack to basically, just like you did in Shurichi, to basically stun the boss and reset the encounter. Now, if you're good with DPS, you're gonna get this in one phase. If you're not, you're going to need to do that to prevent the fire team from wiping, and then you'll just do the entire sequence again. Again, this is a fairly, I would say, confusing encounter for new players just because there's a lot moving going on and there's a lot of moving parts the other thing with this encounter is that it requires everyone to play a role and sometimes because people might die in what role they're at it requires people then to compensate and potentially pick up a role they hadn't planned on so that's one thing to keep in mind you need some strong players to kind of finish this encounter but from a dps perspective as long as you're on point you do everything quickly you have plenty of time He's not the most difficult boss to finish from a DPS perspective. Once you're complete with this, you'll head to the vault. The vault encounter is like nothing you've seen in Destiny 2, and there's no DPS involved. So you don't need to worry about weapons, except that you'll need things for ad clear and things for burst damage, because there'll be some nice you to take out. So swords, shotguns, a super that can take a enemy out pretty quickly are sort of things that you're going to need. But this is more about puzzles and ad clear. You'll notice when you get in the room, there are basically three areas. There's one area, it looks like it has a giant rock. There's one area that has a bunch of trees. A lot of times we call that forest or trees. And there's one area that has a giant orb. For some reason, people call that stairs. If you want to call it that, that's fine. Make up your own call-outs. I like to call that orb because, again, all three areas have stairs. Um, but you'll notice that there's three areas and that there's three plates that correspond with those areas. So that's kind of the core of the activity is that you have these three areas that things are going to happen, but you also have these three plates. You're going to want to have three sets of two people. And again, they're going to be designated per area. So you notice how I said there were three areas. Those people are set to those three zones. One person is going to read and get on the plate. The other person is going to guard them and do ad clear. Once you get on the plate, one person is going to look at their symbols. So you have a symbol once you get on the plates of left, middle, and right. Whichever one is in your middle, call that out. The other people in the encounter are going to look to see if that symbol shows up on their plate as well. It will not show up in the middle. It will either show up on the left or right. If you happen to see it on the left, that means later in the encounter, that plate that you're on is going to need a penumbra. And again, we'll get into that a little bit later. If it's on the right, it's going to need entumbra. And I think for this encounter, obviously each person can remember. The other way is if you have someone on your fire team who's really good at remembering things over time, it might be good to have that one person kind of remember which play is which. But again, the readers can also do that individually. So that person, again, that second person is going to say, whether it's Penumbra and Tumber, he's going to say that to the entire fire team, right? Then he's going to say what his middle symbol is, Okay. And then at that point, the person who's in the third plate is going to say whether his is antumbra or penumbra, right? Whether it's right or left. 
And then they're gonna read out their middle and the same thing with the person who first read. So again, the goal of this is to understand the three plates, whether they're antumbra or penumbra, okay? That'll come up later in the encounter. So while this is going on, you're gonna kill a bunch of ads. It's really important as you're killing those ads not to get into those rooms too far. And the reason is eventually two of those rooms are close up and one will stay open. And that can leave people vulnerable to not being able to guard the middle area. So like I said, as you're going and clearing those ads, try to stay into the center of the room wherever it's possible. But clear the ads in that middle room. Then the runner, and a lot of times who we make the runner, the person who is a reader, we make them the runner as well. Again, you can make it whoever you want to. But on that zone, let's say it's trees or whatever, you go in and the person who's going to run goes into the room, kills all the ads, and then there's going to be a knight that they have to kill at the very end. Once you kill that knight, an eye of ribbon is going to drop. Once you have this Eye of Riven, what's going to happen then is that another area is going to open up randomly in the encounter. So your a wall will fill in on the one that you're in, and you'll have to run, check this map out, either clockwise or counterclockwise around. So let's say you're in tree, you have to go to rock, right? You can go really quickly, come out. Once you come out of the area that's open, you're then going to need, you'll notice that you either have Antumbra or Penumbra on your character. You're going to need to go to one of the three plates that has Antumbra or Penumbra. Again, if you're not clear, if you don't remember which one it was because it's not one of your plates, call out to your fire team. They can let you know which one to go to. Go to that plate and cleanse it with your grenade ability. If you do the wrong one, you're going to die. And at that point, unless you're really quick, that's more likely wipe. You don't have to start over. But while you're doing this, a knight is going to randomly come out of one of these three areas. He's a huge knight. He's going to attempt to go lock down one of the plates. And you have about five seconds, maybe even less than that, once he gets that plate or it wipes the entire fire team. So that's why it's really important to have something that's burst damage, a super shotgun sword to be able to take him out really quickly. If you're struggling, call out to everyone on the fire team to help you out. So you do that. While you're doing that, obviously a new area is opening up. When that new area opens up, the same thing happens. You have the person who's going to be runner go in. They're going to get the Eye of Riven. As soon as they get the Eye of Riven, they're going to book it to go to the next plate. While they do that, when they pick up that Eye of Riven, another area is going to open up. When the second one opens up, you're going to have two knights that spawn. When the third one opens up, you're going to have three knights that spawn. At that point, you know it's going to be in all three plates. So again, it's really important to make sure, A, you're doing the Entumber or the Penumber on the correct plates. It's also very important that you kill the knights as quickly as possible. Again, if you're struggling, call out to your fire team. Once you complete this, that's the first of three times you have to do this. So again, it's just a lot of rinse and repeat. So you do it that first time, then you do it a second time. Again, the same thing, the same sequence where you're doing all three plates, all three knights, and then you have to do a third time. And you notice the third time, you'll know you get there because it has really hyped up, powerful music. I actually really love the music in this encounter. Once you do that, that's the entire encounter. So that may be confusing. That's the easiest way I can think of to explain it. If you do struggle with this, I, again, I would just continue to iterate and practice this. And just if you struggle with the Entumber Penumbra, on your fire team, make sure you have some people who are really good. And if you have to, have someone write it down. If you're in Discord or if you're in PC chat, you can have someone type it in potentially if you need to. But again, it's really important. It can get really confusing to understand which way you have to go. Also, these routes are really important because when you get to the very end of the raid, you're going to have to come back in this room and have to navigate this maze again. So it's really important to kind of understand how you get around, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, to get to the different areas. But again, over time, that will just become muscle memory. And next, you're on to Riven. And so I'm going to be very clear here. I am not going to explain how to do the Riven encounter correctly. I have done it. It is a fascinating and fun way to do the encounter. It is in my mind is a extra level up over how the other encounters are done, right? So normally in Destiny Raids, they gradually give you more mechanics, they make it more complicated. They took this to the nth power of this one because there's just a lot going on. I'm not going to attempt to give you, especially for new players, on how to do that. There are plenty of guides, and if there ends up being a lot of demand, I'll go in and I'll make a guide like that, but I'm not doing that right now. So on the Riven encounter, you're gonna notice that there's six plates. That's for each guardian to stand on and to basically activate the encounter. Couple of notes here is DPS is gonna be king. So 
I, I didn't mention this in Morgath, but one thing you can do for DPS, especially this method, is you can bring in armor from the Dreaming City, and that can give you a significant boost for every piece to your damage. Now, that's stuff that you get through doing the weekly bounties and other activities in the Dreaming City. So if you do have a full set of that, that's going to help you significantly. The other thing I would say for DPS, the way we're going to do this, in the past, you've seen things like grenade launchers, linears. We're going to use swords. Swords are probably the easiest way, and if you have Lament, it is absolutely the best way. And we'll probably have someone with Tractor Cannon, a Well. Those are the sort of things you're going to want for DPS. So once you activate this area and you head down, you'll notice you're, you're descending through, through Riven. You'll notice that there's an area that's blue. There's two doors. Head over to that blue door. That's what we always do. Once you head in there, Riven can show up in one of two areas, either this area or the other area. So there's going to be two things you can run to do. One person is going to go, I'm going to show you this, this area where if Riven doesn't show up in the area you're at, it's a teleport location where you can basically set yourself up to go to the other room really quickly. So have one person outside kind of sit here and wait just in case you have to do this. You're going to go into the room and kill ads. What you're looking for is in the front of the room, you're going to be looking for Riven moving around. There's kind of a black screen there. You'll notice if a shadow shows up. So there's a shadow that kind of goes on the screen. Riven will be in this room and you want to stick in this room. If you don't see that shadow, then at that point, you're going to want to hightail it back to where that person was standing and you all basically crowd up in that area and there's a five second timer and it will take you to the next room. And then you can follow a path basically to go in it requires going by a tree jumping down a couple holes and then you'll end up at riven now the timing on this one's really tight and it's going to limit how quickly you can do dps but it definitely is doable and i've completed riven using this method now regardless of whichever side you're on at this point you're going to want to get on the uh, we typically do it on the left side but again you could do it with each whichever one you want but basically riven will come out and riven's going to have like feet that stick up on two sides right one, right and left we set up there we put a well down we use our tractor and we basically at that point wail on her until she gets to her final stand area so again this isn't that difficult it's going to require some practice but as long as you have lament and if you have the Riven armor especially, but if you have Lament and the Dreaming City armor, you should be able to get through this really quickly. If you struggle with that, there are a couple other ways where you can use things, well, you don't have a thousand voices probably, but if you use a thousand voices, that works really well. Um, you can also do, as long as you aim it correctly, Blade Barrage with using sort of standard solar builds that increase your DPS. The biggest thing, whether you use Thousand Voices or whether you use Blade Barrage, is you're going to make sure you don't hit her eyes. Hitting her eyes is what's going to cause the white mechanic, so make sure you don't do that. So, the, so that's why the sword method is a little bit safer. Once you're complete with this, then you're going to basically be warped into an area where you're going to have to do a jumping puzzle. During that jumping puzzle, you're going to continuously be dying. So, And there'll be things that'll boop you off. So one of the things you want to do, again, is make sure you follow the path to get up there. But you're going to, not necessarily need wells, but as long as you have a Warlock or Rift or things like that, or ways to heal yourself a little bit, um, you can get through this. And if you're quick, you may not even need that. You get through that, you get back to Riven. At this point with Riven, you're just trying to do enough damage to finish her. Do that damage, go down her throat, and kill the ball in the middle, and then you're done with Riven. But that does not complete the raid. So for this next encounter, this one really, really will mess up a lot of fire teams. Now, I will say if you're trying to get as many choices, chances to get a thousand voices, you can run Riven on three characters and get the keys that you need to open the chest and then run this particular encounter just once. For this encounter, you're going to have one person who is chosen at the very beginning, it'll say they are chosen, to pick up the orb, okay? That person is going to run out of Riven with that orb. While they're doing that, the other people in the fire team are going to want to stay as close as possible because you're dying the entire time, and there's a protective orb around the person who has the orb that will protect them from dying, okay? If you don't, eventually you'll get an effect that will eventually kill you. Once you get to about 10, start counting down. The reason for this is once you get to zero, you're going to be warped inside of Riven's heart. If other people are next to you when that warp happens and they're inside the orb, they will go with you and that's going to be bad things for the fire team. So make sure you get you do that. And when you get to about three or two, probably three to be safe because again, there's timing between people say things and when things come back on your mic and your headset. 
I would say at about three, everyone back off. For the person who's initially running the orb, I would say don't do it at the very tip of her tongue. Try to do it at the end of her throat, not the tip of her tongue. And the reason is, is because that orb could fall down and the next person, after you get warped into her heart, the next person is going to be declared. And it'll take a second or two for them to see it on their screen to pick up the orb. If it's down the bottom, it's with the ads, it's going to be kind of hard for people to do that. So then again, as the next person picks up the orb, everyone with them is going to probably start using supers and other things to take out as many ads as possible. One thing to keep in this account, there is no DPS. So feel free to go ham and clear out the ads as quickly as possible. You want to stay as close to the orb runner again. The orb runner is going to be counting down. Now, once they get down to zero, there's something that's going to need to happen within the heart room. For the person who went in the heart room, your real goal is to kill ads and to pick up a taken strength that resets the timer on the orb on the other room. The real thing you're going to want to do is pick that up towards the end, probably about when they say three, so it resets it. So the sequence is someone picks up the orb, they count down to zero, you pick up a taken strength, it resets it. When it happens a second time, that person, you can't extend it again, is going to be sucked in the room. You'll have two people in the room. Now, the key to that is, to make this really simple, is that all the taken strengths have to be picked up to reset the timer. What I typically do is the first person who got sucked into the room, that person always picks up the last orb. That way, they're paying attention, and it's always the same person that knows, I need to pick this up with three seconds left when the person counts down that's in the other room. So let's say you have, eventually you'll have up to four or five people in this room. Everyone else, as soon as a new sequence starts, they're going to pick up their taken strength. And the person who's last is going to stay, stay near a taken strength, say, hey, this is mine. You know, don't touch this one. Now, if you do get messed up and someone misses their taken strength, you can't pick up a second one, right? Because that's that's the entire point, just like you did in Morgeth. So if you do get stuck, you can pick up a second one. But again, try to extend that as long as possible. The reason is you're trying to give the people on the other side as long a time as possible because they have a long path and I'll show it here in this infographic, that they have to traverse to get to and finish this encounter. So at this point, you just rinse and repeat. So you fall down the path, and then you continue to go through the different rooms of the actual raid. At the end of each time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, who, if you know you're going through, that you're gonna stop and make sure the orb is in an area where it's not gonna fall in a hole, it's not gonna roll around, it's somewhere where everyone can get to really quickly before the next person picks it up. The goal of this is to buy the sixth person, is that the sixth person, and if you, you can actually get it quicker, the sixth person will get all the way through and dunk the orb, and that finishes the encounter. A couple things that can hang you up here is if people either get sucked in extra, because if you have an extra person get sucked in, that's basically then less people who can complete the traversing. And once you get towards the end, you're gonna go through the rooms in the vault, that have the other enemies, the bigger enemies in the hallways. And it's good to have at least two people there for one person to be able to kill them because it's difficult for the person with the eye to be able to do that. So again, you're gonna make sure you don't get sucked into the room. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pick up the last, the last taken strength towards the end of the counter so you can extend things. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't drop the orb in some area where people can't pick it up. If you do that, then you get to the, this encounter. Again, this is not that difficult, but it requires practice, and this is where a lot of teams get hung up. Once you get that, you get to the room that has a chest. If you have more than one key, you can actually open it, open up more than one chest to get your 1,000 voices, and that's the encounter. Again, the this is one of my favorite raids. If you get a good fire team, it's definitely doable, but it is a difficult raid and requires a lot of coordination and a lot of understanding of how raid mechanics work. So again, guys, if you like these videos, feel free to check out my other raid guide videos. I have an entire list where you can get those if you're struggling with other raids. But that's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.